Hello, everyone. Scotty White, welcome at Sports. Speaking to the one and only champion trainer, Larry Wade. How you feel, man? I feel amazing, man. You know, I'm here. I'm happy to be here with Caleb Plant to defend it once this world title once again. Uh, it's going to be a great fight, so I'm looking forward to it. Pretty intense um, presser that we had there. A little bit heavier than Badu Jack, the last time I seen you in Atlanta. Um, I just wanted to touch on that. Where do you feel the decision went wrong for Badu Jack in earning that decision against John Pascal? Uh, I really can't answer that question. And the main reason I can't because I thought Badu won the fight. Correct. So when the decision didn't come our way, you know, we were a bit shook. But, uh, you know, Badu being the guy that he is, I thought he would be the most upset. Don't get me wrong, he was upset. But when we got in the back and he sat there and vented for a minute, the first thing he came out of his mouth after he got past the vent was, go check up on Pascal. Let's make sure he's okay. Okay. So you would think a guy who felt like he got cheated will be a little bit more upset in the sense where he didn't care what happens to the other guy. But through it all, you know, Badu being the humanitarian he is, he still wanted to see if this guy was okay in spite of the bad decision. And I just kind of tell you kind of spirit what kind of soul he has. Seen it in person, I'm not going to lie, I thought Bobby Jack pulled it out in the middle of the back end of the fight. Right. Um, a lot of work that was going on that Bobby Jack starts late. I didn't think he started extremely late in the fight. I didn't either. I thought John Pascal was strong early on, but Bobby Jack turned in the gears when he's supposed to. Yeah. Um, when you was on the ring with the team, you all felt confident. Yes. I mean, I thought he had won. Isn't this like a repetitive scene with Bobby Jack? You know, not to get the decision for some reason. Right. I mean, he's a good dude, but why is he coming up short? Well, the perspective that when you start to say that a guy's a slow starter, you look for him to be a slow starter. Okay. If you start to say a guy doesn't do enough on the front side and he gets the hard calls, the judges included start to see the fight in yeah. those same eyes. Uh, so we, we made some adjustments, and you can guarantee the next body jack you see. You're not going to see the things that everyone expects to see the same way they did with Cleverly. They said it was a slow starter, but Cleverly, he started out and he went hard on him. He was throwing 88 punches per round yeah. on average. So you'll see a different fighter if that fight comes back around. It looks like it might. If it does, we would love to have it. Coach, you're about changing gears to Caleb Plant. Undefeated IBF champion. How did training camp go for you? You know what? When you got a guy like Caleb Plant, he's absolutely amazing. He has to be one of the hardest working, if not the hardest working boxer in the sport. The guy works extremely hard. He puts in a, a lot of extra effort, not only just during camp, but before camp preparing. He put on some more muscle mass for this fight, even more than he did for the Mike Lee camp. Okay. Uh, this was a decision he wanted to make to make him even stronger than he was for the Mike Lee camp. He's showing to be extremely sharp right now. His hands are moving real fast. The fastest I've ever seen his hands, especially with uh, his mobility and stability in the punches. This is something that he wanted to work on, and he's done a great job of it. So we're going to see a lot of that in the fight. So as far as what you'll see in this fight, you're going to see an exciting guy. You're going to see a guy who moves like poetry. And then you're going to see some guys get hit really hard. I remember Caleb Plant saying Mike Lee was a bit strong on the inside. Did that kind of change his thought process to say, Hey, Coach, why don't we just put on a little bit? Because speaking boots, he's kind of bulky like Mike Lee. Well, no, because uh, Caleb realizes at the end of the day, it's not about muscle. Okay. It's about skill. At the end of the day, I can make a guy as strong as he possibly can be. I can make him as fit as he possibly can be. But it doesn't make him a great boxer. Understood. It makes you be able to endure more, more punches. At the end of the day, we all know in the sport of boxing, and like many other sports, it's the skills that pay the bills. That other stuff to prepare you so you can maximize your skills. Why do you think Thig and Boots would come in his own backyard and try to dilute the whole situation by saying he took the fight on short notice? You know, is it a lack of self-confidence in no. Thig and Boots, or you feel that he's just trying to play into the hype? No, what he's doing is trying to downplay the situation as if, oh, I'm not ready, I'm the extreme underdog, you know, what was me kind of thing. The kid prepared. Even when he said, oh, we didn't have a short camp, he did not have a short camp. Okay. He had 10, 10 weeks, 8 to 10 weeks, just like any other world title fight. So he's known about this fight. Now, if he decided not to train too late, <laughs> yeah. that's on him. Correct. But he has been given way more than enough notice for this fight. So that's not true. I mean, why would, why would they sit up here and put it on the undercard as the primary fighters who's selling this card? 
Is it just mind game, trash talking, bravado, or what? What you think, Larry? It's all the above. And at the end of the day, nobody cares. Yeah. You know, what we care about is winning, walking away with this belt. So whether one ticket was sold or five million tickets were sold doesn't take away the value of the boxer. You know, the skill is what it's going to be about. What he wanted to do, which was one of his goals, was to bring the fight back that- to his state and to his city. He's done that. And it's up to the, to the public to take part in that and enjoy that moment. And that's really what we want to do. And that's true words there, Larry, because this is the reason why I dro- drove up here, because Caleb Plant is one of my favorite fighters. Mine you know too. what I'm saying? I drove up from Atlanta. I said, it's not going to be much, a lot of media here to support Caleb, because he's kind of like a, a, a silent assassin. Oh, yeah. Wow. You know what I'm saying? He don't do a lot of trash talking, but he'll get in your ass, period. Oh, yeah, period. So, you know, this fight right here, you know, is there anything he said to you in fight camp that make it that much special for the trash talking Thiegan Boots was doing to him and his team? You know, you know what to be honest with you, it's not about camp for Caleb for me. It's about how Ke- Caleb carries himself daily. Okay. I always tell people, Caleb Plant is a man's man. He'll be quiet, he won't say a whole lot, especially if he doesn't know you. But if you say something awkward or crazy to him, best believe he's coming. <laughs> He's not going to hold his tongue, and he's going to come at you hard. So, you know, the best thing for me to be able to say in regards to what this kid said about him today was, you're dealing with a man, a real man. You're dealing with a man who's willing to put everything on the line because he didn't have anything when he started. So the little bit that he has got to this point, he's not willing to let it go. And that's just like feeding, you know, someone who's never been fed. Once they get fed, especially if they're not full, he's going to keep working to keep eating. So he's a long way away from a place where the kids say, oh, wait, you're going to take this fight lightly. No, he looked at him like he was a world champion this whole time. Uh, he got two or three belts, or five belts, even yeah. if that was possible. Caleb took, did not take this kid lightly. He worked equally as hard. You know what? That's a lie. He worked harder okay. than he did any other kid. So, and that's been his trend since we got started training. Hey, superb analogy there, Larry. You know, I have a question. <laughs> Being in sweet hands is... You know, he on the eve of this fight. I have to ask for a possible unification in the future. Because I know Sweet Hands, <laughs> I know Sweet, Sweet Hands is looking forward to establishing that he's the best in the division. Right. What he told me in Vegas for the Deontay Wilder and Luis Ortiz, he said the first title that he want to go for is David Benavidez because he straight up don't like him. What is your take? Who would you like to see him fight for unification? You know, granted, he's successful this weekend. Who would you like to see him um, unify? First? Like you said, you know, get through this obstacle first. Uh, in regards to who I would want to see him fight, it's whoever he and the team feel like they're ready to fight. Okay. At the end of the day, I can say from a personal standpoint, I want this fight. I want this fight. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's whatever the team is, thinks is in their best, you know, interest. If I'm gonna call a name out, it's not gonna be David. It's gonna be who? Canelo. Correct. I'm going for him if I'm gonna Correct. call a name out. Correct. You know, because he's shown that he can fight at all levels. Well, you know, if I'm going to put my guy out there, I'm going to put him out with Canelo, who is one of the best in sport at this moment. So uh, it's really up to them. You know, but if, if they choose David, then I'm definitely going to have him as prepared for that fight as I could possibly have. I wish I could be honest with you saying that Canelo would take that fight. But I, <laughs> I don't think Canelo tried to come up here and see Sweet has Caleb Platt. You, you know, know what I'm saying? You got a guy who is very experienced in Canelo from a very young age, you know, fight pro and has had many, many fights and been in with some of the best. You know, I've always been told for years if, if I was going to rob a bank and I was out scoping the bank to see what's going on in the bank, if I caught somebody else looking at me the same way I'm looking at them, that means they're scoping the bank just like me. Okay. A dog can recognize a dog. Canelo yeah. understands and cares what he sees. Correct. You know, so yeah, I don't think he'll take that fight either because he looks at him and says, oh, yeah, that's a young dog like I was. I might not want to walk that way, which is probably right. True analogy there. It makes all the sense in the world. And, you know, Coach, thanks once again for World Combat Sports, guys, for the interview. Any final words you want to say to Caleb Plant fans before y'all go in there to battle tomorrow? Yes, I want to thank you guys for continuing to support Caleb. You know, this is just one more step and many steps that he's going to make. We just ask you to keep on supporting him, keep coming to the fights, keep watching it on TV. And as long as you continue to do your all, I promise you he'll give his all as well. Hey, well said there, Coach. One last question, the colors, red, white, and blue. What's this about? Well, we are in Nashville. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, you know, with that being said, we try our best to support the Tennessee Titans as the best okay. way we possibly can. For sure. And this was my closest colors that I could pull off. Today. For sure. 
All right. Once again, it's always a pleasure, Coach. Thank you very much. And Thank salute you guys so from much. World Combat Sports.